Hello everyone, Derek Diablo, IMF into Miami Firm, Miami Casuals, and the pride of the South, Diablo, the symbol of excellence, Red Army, South Florida, Manchester United supporters, the best supporters worldwide. And uh, I'm a bit heated on this one, because it concerns a son of a gun that I'm looking to fix up, I'm looking to sort him out. I'm talking about you, Steve Dolan. It's, it's interesting because now me and his fates are inextricably linked. But uh, he made me do all this. He wound me up. He didn't make me do all of it. Obviously, the whole channel is my doing thereafter. But uh, the initial Millwall video, people, a, lot, a lot of people ask me questions about this. The, the only people who knows the truth is my lads from here, Manchester United lads, and Millwall themselves. Because although I talk a lot of bollocks and make stuff up, blah, 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 I'm clowning around. Obviously, there's a lot of truth involved as well, underlying. So, the one video I made, the first initial challenge, let's say, Miami versus Will Millwall, who's the hardest? You got that one. And then there's one where I'm talking about that I was up all night talking to Millwall and so forth. And then people think it's all banter and it's, you know, it's all a laugh or something like that. But no, that was real. And then the real Millwall lads know I'm telling the, know I'm telling the truth right now. And yeah, they did. I was up all night talking to them. I was talking online because I was getting all these different messages that were all saying the same kind of thing, which is that, you know, hey, mate, we don't know who you are. What's all this about? We think it's funny. Leave our name out of it. Steve Dolan is a grass. He's a he's not Millwall. He's from Scotland. Bah, bah, bah. They were saying all that. And it's like, and you know, I was like, whoa, 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 okay, Brandon. The thing is, the tone of there, I can see right on the messages. People who say nasty stuff right away, I can see what kind of messages. These dudes were saying more serious messages, and they were saying it in a hostile way, but I was just st stating my case, and, and but they weren't crossing the line being disrespectful, let's say. They were just trying to tell me, hey, man, whatever you're doing, do it, but leave us out of it. That dude's got nothing to do with us, you know? So then I was basically perplexed, perplexed by it because I'm like, man, okay, who are you, though? How do I know you're Millwall? I said, I want to talk to somebody that's in the videos. Somebody I've seen before. Somebody I've heard of before. But I know that they, I've come to realize how, how tight the OB, the police got it over there. And it's not so easy for these guys to talk and talk online and do all that kind of stuff. But I was talking to these fellas in confidence, the Millwall lads. And uh, I was basically demanding to talk to a leader or somebody I knew. Uh, and I was like, yo, give me a number of somebody that we can talk. Face to WhatsApp and stuff like that. So eventually one lad, I won't say his name... I came to like him, came to respect him. Uh, me and him talked. And I'll tell him what I, and what I told him basically is what I tell you now. This is what all the Millwall lads know. So then so people who are outsiders who are trying to talk like they know about Millwall and this and that, whatever. I don't think so. Because I talk to these lads and they know the score. So to the regular people of Millwall, yeah, I, I don't expect them to know what the what the actual hooligans are doing, you know what I mean, or what they're up to. But as those brothers know. And I call them brothers because I, I, I come to have friends, you know, even if they say, even if they're not going to tell me I can walk around a mill wall and go to the den, still, I got friends that say, hey, brother, apart from, aside from all the hostility with the football, you know what I mean? So I've made good friends in Millwall, and obviously I respect Millwall, even if I'm Manchester United and if we have to fight, we fight each other. But uh, with that being said, obviously I have a great deal of respect for Millwall, much more now through going all this than I would have just by watching the movies. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. So basically, you know, like I tell, like I told those brothers, and I told that that lad, and I'll tell you now, it's like I was just trying to. Six months ago, basically uh, last year, I walked away from the leftism. Uh, I got ran out of the communist movement and the antifa, you could say somewhat, but the political side of it by the Me Too and the neo feminists and all this kind of people. So I walked away from all that, and you know, I'm the type of person who obsesses about stuff, and I'm up all night putting my energy into different things. So it's not that I need some kind of hobby or something, but uh, it's something to that effect. Because, you know, by the end of 2017, I always do my martial arts, I always do my music or whatever like that. And even the music is fueled by my politics and stuff. So it's not that it didn't have any direction, but almost something like that. And then the skinhead scene is kind of dead end. You know, like you see the older skinheads, a lot of them are not doing too good. And they're too content with being in their, in their place uh, financially and so forth. So anyway, I know there's no skin. I did everything you can do with skinheadism, let's say. And I, I was looking to go into something different, honestly, um, consciously. And it was like suede head would be the first thing I would think. But suede head is very limited for people who know what that is. That's a subject for another video, I suppose. It's very limited, very specific. And also, people are not going to exactly see what it, know what it is here. And uh, So, football hooligan, 
I never thought to claim hooligan. I never would have claimed hooligan because you got to be out fighting in football to be a hooligan. So I never would have claimed like Miami hooligans, even though I've been around all this stuff and I've been trying to promote it and around it. I would have never called myself a hooligan because you're not a hooligan if you're not actually out there fighting. You're an internet hooligan or some fake hooligan. Like, I guess like what I am. But the stuff I've done in the past is equivalent to hooliganism in this country. The skinhead scene and hardcore scene in America is the equivalent of the UK hooligan scene. We are the people who know about that. We are the people in the 80s who knew what hooliganism was. We listen to Cockney Rejects, The Business, Last Resort, Blitz. All the Oi songs are talking about football violence. So then people who don't know about Oi and skinheads in England, it's unfortunate you're deprived of your own culture and then you don't understand the whole roots of all this stuff, honestly. If you don't know about the skinhead movement, you could just look at uh, the videos like Tony O'Neill talking about Red Army, talking about the old, tra uh, old traffic, see all these skins there and stuff like that. So to leave out the skinhead element, uh, even the real football factories, Danny Dyer himself didn't know what skinheads meant. And he had to go, he's going, he's there talking to a black lad who's a, who's a skinhead decked out in the one shop. He had to teach him the basic history. He thinks that the skinheads are Nazis. And he's from England, Danny Dyer, who, hooligan and everything. So I think even a lot of hooligans under, don't understand this. At least the younger lads that don't know that skinheads come from Jamaica. That skinheads is a multicultural thing and the white power came out much later with Ian Stewart's screwdriver and all that. So that, you know, that, I've already talked about that kind of stuff. And some people, I guess, can never get that stuff out of their head. Uh, but long story short... This cunt, Steve Dolan, I was on the One Football Casual Culture Group, and basically I decided to become a football casual. I looked at all, I, I got deeper into it, and then by mid-year, it was really a conscious decision. Like, I think I'm going to go into this casual thing, you know? No, I'm not talking to anybody about this. Nobody else really knows about it that much. This is even before I started hanging out with ILF and everything like that. So it's like, I'm just doing this on my own in my room and just thinking. So the first thing I did really was uh, I got myself a... I got myself the ca I ordered the casuals book, which was difficult to find. It wasn't easy. I had to buy it used. Uh, but I, I, out of all the things I was looking at, that looked like the, the most interesting one, the most informative one. And I, and I saw a lot of good things said about it. So I bought that. And uh, a Burberry scarf. <laughs> and that was like my first idea that I'm going to become a casual. And uh, before the book's over, so that book completely changed my life. Now, is it weird for somebody, a grown man too, 44 years old, going to about be 45, to have your life changed by a book? I don't think so. You know, uh, the Bible, Quran, Torah, you know, like Nietzsche, Satanic Bible, uh, you know, there's a lot of books that change people's lives. Uh, the fact that mine came from football violence scene and casuals, I don't think that that uh, makes it any more or less significant. So then before that, before I was done with that book, I'm done reading it now. When I was halfway through that book, that's it. I, all the stuff I was reading, I could understand all the words. I had the background. I had the desire for it. And like Gary Bushel says in that one Casuals documentary, uh, he says, you know, Casuals, you know, it's the one thing you can't put your finger on it. You know, I don't know about that. It's elusive. You know, it's very interesting and very complex. And has a lot of class and style, so I was gravitated towards it. And it also, uh, looking at these lads from the films and stuff, I could look up to them. The way they're dressing, the way they're talking, the way they're acting. And they're in their 50s and 60s. And, you know, they're still out and about doing their thing, getting their respect. A lot of them ain't still fighting, which I'm not exactly intending to do, get into more fights. Uh, but for the football and a fair fight, that's another ball game. But I'm not looking to go out and get in proper bar fights and all that like these lads. Some of these guys, 60 years old, still going to jail and everything for football violence. I'm not trying to go down that path. But uh, back to this cunt Dolan. So it's like I'm claiming uh, Miami casuals. That's why I, I put. I had said Lacoste. We're gonna go with Lacoste. You know, AKA MLM, Miami Lacoste Mafia. I'm going in that direction with it. But it was it was fashion to me because I knew that we're gonna the. It, it, the, the football was going to come, uh, but I was really more just interested in the fashion and applying my history of violence within the skinetic gang scene and martial arts and everything. I was just look, I, you know, I was kind of saying that that's my credibility in violence because a lot of casuals even are not so much into the fighting. That's what you'll see if you watch and you hear uh, Nick Love talking about the firm remake. He's saying like he was Dominic. You know, that he was into the, the camaraderie and the, and the clobber, the clothing. And sure, scrap, but more, it was about, the, he wasn't so super into the violence, let's say. Whereas you got real nutters, like I probably more used to be, that are just like a lot of the violence that are attracted to that. Sure, the camaraderie, but people that are psych psychos just enjoy violence to begin with. And there's a backdrop. So with that being said, I felt like hooligan implies psychotic, hooligan implies violent. Uh, 
uh, whereas casual, it's kind of not an afterthought, it's an organizing principle, but there's much more to the casual style, and you watch the uh, the card of casuals, you know, you see that lad in that video, like I I've, I've mentioned on another video, I, I was really impressed by the way he spoke about it. So at any rate, I was only claiming it casual, and then I got on that website, and I started getting attacked from all these other cunts, Americans and British and stuff, talking all this smack, and I'm like, man, so I'm gonna start retaliating and defending myself. I'm like, who is you, who is you? And then little by little, I'm chopping them all down, exposing them and stuff, who are you, pop, 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 and I'm showing my gang background, and then I'm calling people out one by one. I'm like, okay, what's up? Pop, 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 pop. And I basically shut everybody down, then it started being this mystery character, Del Boy, who I became Del Boy eventually, that's another story. Uh, Del Boy Trotter, Derek Del Boy Trotter, US version. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, so, this fake profile starts hitting me like you want a challenge for a fight and talking about that they're gonna come here and they want to do a three on three, ba 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 ba. And then I was like, all right, let's do this. And then it's like they want you, oh, they won't reveal their name or their firm, and they're gonna wear masks. I'm okay, wear a mask. Well, I gotta see your face before the fight, and we're gonna film it. Oh no, we're not gonna film. It. I'm like, what do you care if you're wearing a mask? What difference does it make? So they keep talking back and forth, and, I, and then I start getting public. I'm like, man, I'm like man, what type of shit is this? How are you gonna be again in a gang fight? And you don't even know the name of the other gang, and they're not willing to represent their name. Whatever. I'm supposed to organize my guys to go fight the, the no name mob from England? Psst, what's all that about? So then, in the process of all that, then I'm like saying, Who, Where are you from? Who are you? What firm? And then it started being, Oh, born in Hackney. Okay, born in Hackney. Okay, well, then, then it started, then I got Millwall. Somebody, then Millwall came up there. Like, it's Millwall. And I don't, so I believe that one was Steve Dolan, but I didn't know who Steve Dolan was at the time. But either way, it came to be Millwall's, the one that's challenging us. So then for me, it's like, you know, I was like, damn, man, I'm just trying to claim casuals, man. I'm not even trying to get into no fights yet. You know, we, we don't even have a club yet. Da, 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 da. And now, just for me getting the internet starting all this, now I got to face like the damn hardest, most feared hooligan firm of all in the history of England or somewhat. Like, so I'm like, damn, you know, like I definitely didn't want to start out that way. That wasn't my intention at all. Let alone I don't even hardly have that many guys and we're just building up. But I was like, if that's what it is, then that's what it is. So bum. Then I came out against Steve Dolan and Millwall. Then those lads hit me up. Pop, 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 pop. And the thing is, uh, there's more to it. Um, after I, I came out, basically I said, fuck Millwall on that site. And then he hit me up to join his website. And then I was like, I seen all the Millwall stuff, and I started seeing the articles about him being Millwall, Steve Dolan. And they say they got him in Russia and Krakowia, all these other places. He's a big time hooligan, you know, big time Millwall guy. Talking about that we attack anybody who comes to our grounds. Ba 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 ba. I'm like, wow, this guy's a real deal, you know. And then uh, I was like, okay, mate, I see that, you know, you hit me up. This is before I made the video. And I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, what you want to do? I want to do a 10 on 10, Millwall versus Miami. He's like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, yo, I think we can make money. Let's turn this into a professional sport, ba 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 ba. He's like, yeah, mate. And I was like, he's like, I was like, hey, man, I hope all the other guys have, you know, anyway, I don't know. We started talking more to the point where it was like, I told him, well, listen, here's what you do, brother. I don't know how much you know about pro wrestling. I'm like, but what you do is you get your guys, go stand in the pub, in the Millwall pub that we've seen in the videos, or in the tunnel, get a bunch of your guys, mask them up so they don't show their identities, and you talk, and you call out Miami, you call me out, and then we'll make a re-challenge video, and we'll go from there. And he says, oh, mate, uh, you know, you make the first video because they won't do it. Once you make the video, they'll do it back. So he's speaking on behalf of Millwall the entire time. And he's presenting himself as Millwall. And I got, he got the video, he got the, all the articles to back him up. And nobody ever exposed that he wasn't. So I took it at face value, more than face value. Man got articles. Like, I got articles about my gang stuff. You can't pretend in America to be in a different gang. That wouldn't, I don't know how they, I can get away with that. But I come to find out it's because he lives so far away from those lads and everything like that. And those guys are under a microscope. So basically, uh, Dolan souped me up and told me that, yeah, do it, do it, do it. So, you know, it's all, we're going to make a promotion of a fight. He's speaking for Millwall. So then I made the first video. And now that's putting me in a life and death situation against Millwall lads. You know what I mean? They don't take that stuff as a joke. But those dudes, as I said in the video, they're smart. Or at least I felt like they're very intelligent in, in the way they handled this because uh, they stepped to me and we talked. And then I, I basically everything I just said now and a little bit more, I told to one lad in a WhatsApp conversation. And then from there, he asked me, which I didn't think of. He's like, can you show the emails? He said, can you, can you show me the emails? I didn't think of it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't like know how to do it. I was like, maybe I can do it. And then he basically we figured out, I, he told me how to do it. And I sent them all the emails. And when I look back at the emails, as I sent to Millwall, 
you know, it's even more explicit. He's going way into it like he's Millwall, and they're like, ah, and then from there, it exposed him. Pa 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 pa. And then after a while, he apologized to me in a private message. Oh, listen, mate, I'm not really Millwall. I'm from Scotland. I'm not really a hooligan. So I see what he's doing. Uh, I see that he's pimping the, the hooligan game and everything like that. And he said something to me, and I'll agree with this. He said that me and him and others like us are keeping the hooliganism alive because we're talking about it. So you didn't need internet hooligans in the original days when it was all going on. You didn't need the movies. It was really happening. But now that the era is over and it's, people are fighting to preserve it, you need people like me and you need the films. Otherwise, it would have been over and long gone with, you know, been over and done with. So with that being said, I don't regret any of the things I've done with this. Uh, sure, I've made a lot of enemies, but I've also made a lot of friends. And uh, I've given myself a new career because I love British culture and, you know, I want to come over there and make films and entertain people and so forth like that. And talk about these things. But as to Dolan, uh, even though it may have helped me, he didn't try to help me. He tried to mess me up. He souped me up. He wind me up. You get me in a situation with Millwall. You're not even Millwall. But guess what? It exposed him. And it gave me more respect uh, within the hooligan community than I guess I would have had otherwise. I don't know. Or they're not going to respect an American. They don't believe we have a scene. So, to Dolan, it's the, all the other challenges are all banter. Let's say that. You can't arrange fights like this. So to Scotland Yard and everything, everything's just banter. I'm just going to go there as a tourist. I'm not looking to arrange any fights or organize any football violence. Everything's just been talking and having a good, having a bit of banter, having a laugh. As for Dolan, one-on-one -on -one prize fight, any rule set, boxing, kickboxing, MMA, street fight, bare knuckle. You are the only person in England I have a legit problem with because you try to set me up in a bad situation that could have been bad for me. And maybe it still will be bad for me, but at the same time, I'll accept it as it stands now. Because me and Millwall were smarter than you, brother, and we outfoxed you. And I exposed you as a phony and a fake, and you're not Millwall, you're from Scotland, and you're not even a hooligan. So, Steve Dolan, I'm still after you, Jack. And this is the honest story of how it all went down from the horse's mouth, Derek Diablo, IMF, Miami Casuals. Let it be known.